There's no way to explain what it feels like to get across a hurdle that um, you fundamentally don't believe you're capable of achieving, you know, and uh, when you do, you kind of realize how surprised you are that you just accomplished it. So my first feeling was just sheer shock um, that it was really over. I mean, somehow I had this feeling like maybe maybe I have to win eight matches to win and not seven. And, but no, I have seven and it's over and I'll never have to, you know, uh, not know what it's like to win here at Roland Garros. So once the shock kind of settles in, uh, then just the emotions come. Um, so when it was over, it was a feeling of, of joy, a feeling of pride, and a, and a feeling of sharing. When I won here in 1999, it was uh, probably the most least likely year for me to have won it. You know, I was in the finals back in 1990, 1991, favored, you know, to win both finals. Um, and then in 1999, I'm 29 years old. Two years earlier, I had fallen from number one in the world to number 140 in the world. And I climbed all the way back up again. Um, but still at this time, clay was very difficult for me and uh, almost didn't play the tournament. Uh, because of a shoulder issue I was having, and my coach talked me into playing. I had a tough draw early. Um, I got through some tough matches and found myself in the finals, you know, again, favored really uh, in the finals. So the pressure of winning uh, this tournament was, was much greater for me in 99 because I had already won the other ones, and it was the last one for me. And I, I kind of knew I would never have a chance to do it again. At that time I was frustrated because uh, I lost a lot of matches, but more than that, for three months my right wrist was were hurting me. And um, I remember that the deadline for French Open was in Barcelona, and I was ranked 100 or something like this. And one of the last players who got into the main draw was, was myself, and I was happy about that because the Langelos is my favorite tournament by far. By far, it's, uh, it's, a, it's the air, is the oxygen or something like this that makes it special. Then there was Monte Carlo, my wrist continued to hurt and even after the tournament I had my mind of, of stopping tennis. It's just because of frustration. I knew uh, Andre Medvedev very well. Um, I knew his game very well. Um, you know, he was also having a resurgence. He was thinking about quitting tennis two months earlier. We met in Monte Carlo after I lost to Ivan Lubicic and um, I, I told him that I'm thinking of quitting tennis because my wrist hurt. And um, he explained me his uh, method, methodics. He said, you have to play one hour, but 100%, you don't even drink water. You don't even come to the chair. You just hit the balls as hard as you can for one hour. He said, and he, he told me, believe me, it's, it's tough. I remember coaching him. We were out at dinner one night and I was telling him, listen, man, you, this is what you do well. This is what you got to stick to. And then uh, we met again in Paris. And uh, after every match, it's accident also. It's by luck or by some kind of fate that uh, he saw me. After Pete, he was like this. After Di Pasquale, after all the matches, he was saying, congratulations, well done. Because he was, in a way, he's responsible for me, in a way responsible and also giving me the new light and the new breath of, of the way to practice, which was very important, uh, you know, for me, I must admit. I wish I played the Grand Slam finals before to knew what to expect. I remember that I did the routine stuff, dinner in the same restaurant, same food, but um, I think the deep inside, not the actual mind, but the other mind that was uh, saying that you were about to face something difficult uh, tomorrow and I couldn't fall asleep till five. I went into the match um, very nervous. 
the night before very nervous. Uh, and the nerves made me um, come out very slow, you know, I was the ball looked fast. I wasn't moving very much. Uh, it, everything was happening so quick. I woke up at six, did the routine as usual, but um, for the first time in my life, it was difficult to tie the shoes. I felt that my hands are a little bit <laughs> not normal. You know, everything went away from the first shot in the warm up, but I admit that uh, this kind of fear, I would call it, because it's, it's a cold sweating, you know, and very tight. And like I said, I wanted to play at least normal so people see the show, the, uh, the show, I mean, the game. Good game. He was a difficult opponent on clay, especially if it was heavy, you know, especially if it was wet or if it was raining, you know, he, big, strong guy, about six foot five, um, you know, and he had a big serve. He had a great backhand and he could just lean on backhands. And his forehand, when he was confident, um, he also could control this ball very well. And, uh, and he moved good for a big guy. Um, they said I was favored going in, but you know I knew that you know he was better than probably people realize. Perfect tactic for two sets. I just didn't give him any pace. It was not so difficult that day because it was slightly windy. I knew that if I go hitting with him, most likely I would lose, and uh, it was easy. I was not. Uh, afraid of uh, Agassi as an opponent, you know, I would see, I would say, I would be more uh, concerned about playing Bruguera or Querten or Correcha or any Spanish guys in the final, because I knew I would have to hit more shots. And here, I, I knew I had to be smart, and I was smart for two, two and a half sets. I was not moving, not playing well, um, and the rains came and it stopped the match, and I got a chance to gather myself, talk to my coach, and I kind of really settled down. It was four all in the third set. I'm down two sets to love. I'm serving 30-15, I double fault. 30 all, I double fault again. Uh, 30, 40, I miss a first serve. So maybe I'm gonna double fault three in a row and I hit an aggressive second serve. And you know, he hits the return short. Uh, I pick a area of the court to hit the ball. Uh, he guesses right um, and I come to net and he hits the ball at my feet. And I, I hit a volley uh, that landed on the baseline and I could have missed it so easy. And, when I hit this volley, uh, I got back to deuce. I won the game and I switched sides. And I just remember thinking at 5-4, you know, in the, in the third set, I said, you know, if I just play four good points, uh, I'm gonna win the third set. If I play four good points right now. And I, and I did, I played four great points. Uh, I won the third set. And I think I got very uh, relaxed at that point. And I kept getting better and better and better as the match as the match went on after that. Coming closer to the end, I wanted to take it. Somehow I felt that Agassi was making a lot of unforced errors. And uh, the only thing that I, I was thinking is, I have to do it myself. You know, don't wait for his mistake. Of course, now I realize that it was stupid, but I wanted to play good and that was, that was a tactical mistake. When we started to play the fifth set, I remember specifically that I was saying, go back to the first tactic, go back to, to make him play. And I was trying to put him back again to push him from the baseline by playing the high shots. And he was taking everything early, he got his rhythm, there was no more unforced errors, there was no more three points for me, I had to fight for every point and I think the, his experience of uh, being in the finals before played some kind of role that he uh, could complete his shots with more uh, sort of confidence or sort of um, aggressiveness that, uh, that was needed in the fifth set.
told myself to go back to the guy's weakest point. So I um, served his forehand, which um, was the right thing to do. Uh, he hit the ball short in the court, and I just panicked, and I came in, and I got away with it. Down yeah. yeah. Next point, I, for some reason, uh, emotionally, uh, I changed my game plan, but last second I decided to hit a serve to his backhand, then he hit up the line for a cold winner, almost, and um, and it was 15 all, and so then I slapped myself and said, don't hit it to his backhand. I served his forehand and he missed it. 30-15, uh, I served his forehand and he missed it. 40-15, um, uh, match point, I served his forehand and he missed it. Um, you know, when it left his racket, uh, I knew it was going out, probably before anyone except him. So I was probably the second person to know I had just won the French Open. I see, just see, just got, just call, just got. Of course I know his story, and I know that he wants this uh, Roland Garros. He needs it, you know, so I'm happy for him. I gotta say it was, uh... You know, the best moment I've ever had on a tennis court, you know, as far as an accomplishment goes. Uh, and, and the feeling was me living the rest of my life, truly believing I wouldn't have another regret as it relates to, to my career.